Are you looking to create a more immersive experience at your gaming table? A lot of people use music and lighting, but have you thought about smell? Smell can really transport you to deep within a mine, to a lofty wizard's tower, or a quaint village. We're reviewing six candles from Wicked Warlock, so stay tuned to find out if these are a must-have for your gaming table. Wicked Warlock got in touch with us and offered to send us six of their candles to review. We received Dragon's Lair, Tavern, Halfling Village, Elven City, Wizard's Tower, and Dwarven Mine. Wicked Warlocks makes candles inspired by fantasy settings, which are great for tabletop or even video game players. According to their website, their candles are hand-poured in the U.S., burn for 40 to 50 hours, have two times the fragrance of other candles, are made with wood wicks in amber glass containers that you can reuse for other projects, and are made with 100% soy wax. We'll get more about that part in a little bit. Each candle also has a little story crafted by Enya, the dark elf, who in the world of those stories makes these candles to preserve the memories of her adventures. Ryan and I have burned all of these candles for a couple of hours each. Our favorites we definitely burn for longer, so I'm going to talk about each of the candles' scents individually and then share our overall experience and thoughts about these candles. Let's start off with Wizard's Tower. The scent notes for this candle are patchouli, vetiver, and pipe tobacco. Vetiver? Vetiver. I definitely got the tobacco, but it's definitely not in that, like, gross way, but more of that, like, academic feel. Very much pipe tobacco, not cigarette tobacco. And while I'm not usually a fan of patchouli, this has a really good blend of it where it's not overpowering, but it adds that, like, funky spicy note. And I think that combined with the woody vetiver makes this a really unique candle. It does feel like I'm in a wizard's tower. There's a bit of an academic feel there, but also has like, okay, there might be some odd spell components or potions sitting about the room, kind of filling it with their scent. This is a very atmospheric candle. You smell it, but it doesn't active. I don't actively think like, oh, there's a candle burning in this room. It fills the room nicely and just kind of feels like, oh, this is the smell of the room I'm in. Um, I really like this one, and I think it's a good combination of scents that I haven't particularly run into with any other candles. Both Ryan and I are big fans of this one, and I can see us burning this candle during games. Okay, let's go to where many campaigns begin. The Tavern. (laughs) This candle lists spiced honey, tonka, and leather as the scent notes. Here's the thing. I don't necessarily get leather in this candle. The spiced honey and tonka just overwhelm everything else. No, it's a nice candle. It smells like holiday baking. It's warm and cozy and makes me want a cookie. (laughs) But I'm not really sure I would call it tavern. Like, if this was listed as a bakery candle, yes, 100%. Honestly, it smells like a candle Ryan's mom would absolutely love, and this is not in a diss at all. Um, But it doesn't have anything that I haven't smelled in a candle before or in something that I could pick up at, like, any kind of candle store. Um, This one, the scent is just very clear that I'm burning a candle for me. It doesn't have the atmospheric quality that many of the rest of the candles have. Now, I can see a lot of people really loving this candle and wanting to burn it all the time. For me, it's a little too sweet bakery. Um, I like more of the, like... This smells just like a nice room uh, than something's in the oven, because then I just want a cookie all day. Next up, another classic fantasy setting, an elven city. This smells of lavender, redwood, and cedar. Yes, all three of those scents come through in this candle. The redwood and the cedar blend in a, a, a blend a bit, but it does give you that feeling of being in some kind of, like, big, deep, old pine forest. And the sweetness of the lavender adds an interesting herbal aspect. This makes me really feel like I'm, like, in a witchy or crafty homemade store, or honestly, a really nice spa. (laughs) And I can get behind the idea of Rivendell smelling like a spa. Yeah. Um, You know, it smells like you've used a really expensive soap. 
Uh, now, this is a bit stronger of a scent uh, as far as when you burn it. You definitely can tell that you are burning a candle, but it does disperse well in the room. Um, it just has a little bit stronger effect. All right, let's dive underground for Dwarven Mine. This candle has notes of sandalwood, palo santo, and amber. All three of those are there. It's just very a very subtle candle. There's a nice, like, earthy funkiness and a slight metallic smoky aspect to it. Um, out of all of these, this had the least strong smell for a candle. You kind of had to be right next to it to really notice, oh, yes, there is something burning. Um, which, you know, if you want to be sitting, have it sit in the middle of your table, that's great. I really also do like this smell. I think it's unique and really perfect for gaming tables. It's just not, if you are looking for, I am burning a candle, this isn't it. But if you're looking for, I am setting an atmosphere, I think this is going to um, be more your vibe. Back up to the surface for Halfling Village. I just was burning this one, so I'm going to set it back down. <laughs> With notes of rosemary, mint, and petrichor, this candle was intense when I first smelled it. Uh, when I unwrapped the candles, most of them, when I pulled, you know, took the wrapping off and pulled off the wooden top, I was like, oh, that's nice. I can definitely smell, you know, what the candle smells like. This was like, whoa, that's strong, even before I got the lid off. I think it's the petrichor in this wax has a very artificial, overwhelming sense when it's in the wax. However, once you burn it, it just smells like it just rained. There is that wet dirt and ozone smell, and it's not overwhelming. So I'm really impressed with that blend. It, and then the petrichor blends very nicely with the mint and rosemary to have this green, herby, countryside smell. Ryan honestly hated it when he first smelled it, just the candle itself. But then after we lit it, he was like, oh, I've changed my mind. I really like this. We have a hill in our yard that has a bunch of rosemary and other herbs, and this smells like I've just gone out there and like stood amongst all of the rosemary right after a rainstorm. I love it. This is unique and honestly one of our favorite candles for how fresh and different it is. It really feels like I'm been transported into this halfling village and I can kind of see all of the villagers walking around tending their sheep, tending their crops, and just everything's green and smells wonderful. And finally, Dragon's Lair. As you can tell, um, <laughs> this was our favorite. Uh, we have burned uh, this a lot. This smells like dragon's blood, which is a very specific incense, clove, and amber. It's smoky, warm, metallic. Um, it definitely feels like you're underground. It's comfortable, but there's an element that's like slightly off-putting. It's very atmospheric, but is still evident that like there is a candle burning. There is a scent to this room. It fills the room pretty quickly with scent. And Ryan honestly said he would burn this every day if he could, or if they offered this um, formulation in tea lights, he would get one, some for our altar. This is the most unique of all the candles we've tried, and we haven't yet found another candle that has kind of this combination of smells and really nails it. Dragon's Lair and Halfling Village are both of our two favorites that we were sent. Um, Ryan's, I think this one a little bit more. Mine happens to be this one a little bit more. They're very unique. They're perfect for a gaming table, but also something that we would both just burn every, you know, if we wanted our house to smell nice all the time. They were lovely. A big thanks to all of our patrons, especially Tucker. If you like our videos and want to directly support us, make sure you're subscribed and then head on over to Patreon after this video. Patrons get early access to videos and other perks while helping us make more videos for everyone to enjoy. All right, let's chat about these candles in general. First, I feel like I need to address the fact that the website says 100% vegan soy wax, but at least the candles we got are labeled coconut and soy wax. I'm not knowledgeable about candle making to know what the difference can make in the candles, but it's just something to note. Um, I, and I'm also not sure, I think they may have just changed their formulation and haven't updated the website. Um, maybe we got an early access or maybe we got like an older formulation. 
But if the wax makeup of your candle is important, that is good to note um, because if it is, if they are now doing the soy wax, it wasn't accurate for what we got. So that might maybe affect how it smells and how it burns. I really like the amber glass container it comes in. It looks really nice and gives off a nice warm glow. The labels are all lovely. It has an image on it, but it doesn't um, prevent you from being able to read the name of the candle or the brief description of the scent. And um, it kind of helps along with the description set. What is the scene of this candle? Each candle has a wooden carved lid that fits snugly, pretty nice and snugly, and they do help kind of hold in the scent as most of the candles. I couldn't smell them um, when I was unboxing them until I pulled that off when I first opened the box. And then, you know, having them just sit around, uh, can't really smell it through that lid. So that kind of helps maybe preserve it or also just you don't have a whole bunch of different scents kind of uh, battling each other. These are hand poured and we did notice a slight variation in the levels of the candles um, and the height of the wick. That's something that's just going to happen with hand poured instead of machine poured. Um, but it didn't seem to be enough that like, oh, you're getting a lot more wax or a better wick in one or the other. And it might also have been a matter of like, okay, they all have the same amount of wax. It's just how it settles. Speaking of the wicks, I am a fan of the flicker effect the wood wicks give off. Now, the website says the wood wicks crackle. Meh. A couple kind of did it and definitely it took a little bit of burning to get that. Um, but I really had to be on top of it to hear it. The room had to be quiet. And even at that, I almost can't hear it over like when our AC kicked on. And we don't even have that loud of a fan to our AC. So I'd say they have a flicker effect. Yes. But I'm not sure I'd definitely call it a crackle effect. You know, we've gotten candles before with um, that have crackled like a fire with a wood wick. So I know they can do much louder. Um, Ryan, one of them, he even thought the sink was dripping because it was so loud. That one may be a little too loud. Also note, you really do have to trim the wicks. We didn't on a number of them and found that the second time we went to burn them, they lit and then sputtered out like a minute, two minutes later until we stopped and trimmed the wick. Now, trimming the wicks is a little awkward. We had to kind of get a pair of scissors down in there to snip at them, um, especially as it gets lower in the candle. Just something to keep in mind. I know that is kind of candle maintenance is trim your wicks, but with traditional uh, cotton wicks, um, Sometimes you can get away with not doing that. Wood wicks, these wood wicks, you definitely need to trim them. Burn time was very accurate. Uh, you know, we've burned Dragon's Lair for several hours over several days and still have a little bit left. Um, so I think we're pretty close to that 40, if not over it, um, on the burn time for that candle. I also really love the stories that are on the website for each candle. That's a cool touch. I haven't really seen a whole lot elsewhere, but I really wish that I got that along with the artwork, the great artwork, on like a little card or something that comes with the candle. You know, especially if I were to give this as a gift to someone, this is a feature of the candles um, that I also want to have that included. And I think especially for the price, just adding in a little bit of an extra a card would bump up the value of these candles um, a lot and have that experience as like, here's the candle, here's the story and the art that comes with it. Speaking of that artwork, the website has some great artwork of each of these candles, but I do wish looking at them that they also had a picture of the actual candles. For me, if I only found out about these online and I went to their website, I'm not sure I'd trust something that was just a artist rendition. You know, how, this artist rendition is very accurate but that's not always the case. And now we come to kind of my final part of the review, the price. At $38 for an eight ounce candle plus shipping, that's pricey. Now compared to other uh, well-known tabletop RPG candle companies, it is the highest I've seen. And compared to at least one of the other companies, it's almost double. Now, there are a lot of factors that go into candles and pricing um, and some of the features of this 
I think are a little higher end, like the wood wicks and the amber glass, perhaps also the exact wax. I know that can vary the price a lot. Now, me personally, I think if I saw this on a shelf at my gaming store, I wouldn't pick it up purely because the price is higher than I care to spend on a candle. But I'm also content with like a box store mid-range candle. I don't really ever buy luxury candles. Um, that's just not something I particularly care to spend my money on. Now, if you really love candles and are looking for a higher end candle, I definitely say check out Wicked Warlock. They do currently have a bundle of five of their candles, uh, Elven City, Tavern, Dragon's Lair, Dwarven Mine, and Hero's Feast, which haven't smelled that one. Um, that's only $149. And that brings the candles down to $30 for each individual candle. And it has free shipping. So that to me seems a little bit more of a reasonable cost per candle. Um, yeah. So have you tried any of the candles from A Good Warlock? What did you think? Do you like burning candles? Um, is this something that you think you would look at doing for your games? Let's chat about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye!